I'm Marley Bird. In this video series, I will teach you how to make the Nomad Fair Isle Knit Sweater. This is a free pattern available at Yarnspirations.com. I've put a link in the video description box right down there below. Once you have your free pattern, <clears throat> Once you have that free pattern, you can gather your materials and work along with me as we make this beautiful sweater. I've broken up the instructions into five different videos, so I will take you step by step and teach you everything you need to know to complete each section of the sweater. By the end of these five videos, you should have a beautiful sweater you are proud to wear. Go ahead, grab that free pattern. We're gonna jump into the first part of this sweater. Before you make any sweater pattern, it's important to take a look at the pattern itself to see what yarn they are using to make this sweater and how much of that yarn you will need. You will notice here there are two colors and the amount of yarn you need is dependent on the size you will make. If you take a look at the second page, I'm going to cover up, so this is the second page here, you can see that the fit bust size and the finish bust size are two different measurements. To fit bust measurement, that's the size you are. So when you measure yourself around the fullest part of your bust, that is your to fit bust measurement. For me, I'm a 52 inch bust, so I need to make this three slash five X size. When you look down here, this lets you know how much ease there is in a sweater. Now ease, this is, this is the the easiest way to explain ease, you ready? It's the amount of inches or centimeters or whatever your measurement system is, the difference between your body and the actual sweater. Okay, so if your body is 20 inches and the sweater is 40 inches, you have 20 inches of ease. Does that make sense? So down here, if I'm a 52 inch bust, and the sweater will measure 63 inches when I'm done, I have 11 inches of positive ease. Does that make sense? That makes this sweater oversized. It is not meant to be a tight fitting sweater. You're supposed to have some room to move in the sweater. So when you're choosing what size to make for you, the first thing to know is you are making an oversized sweater and because of that, you should choose whatever size up here is closest to your actual bust measurement and then these will be your finished measurements. Okay, so that's how you decide how much yarn you need as written over here in these instructions. You'll notice then that I took a highlighter and I highlighted the size I'm making and how much yarn it says I need. And I also highlighted that over here on page two. The reason I do that is if I happen to put this work down and not come back to it for several different weeks, and let's say I forget what size I was making, I now have a record of what size or what set of instructions I'm following along with as I'm making my sweater. It's very important to highlight or circle or make note, do anything you need to do so that way you are not left unaware of what size it is you are actually making. You'll notice I also highlighted that there are two different needle sizes. And I do that for my own benefit because I always tend to forget to switch from the smaller needle to the larger needle or vice versa. And so I highlight the needle sizes that I need. It also reminds me again, if I set this down and come back to it, to make sure I have all of these uh, size needles with me that I need. All right, so that's the main information you need here on the first page. It also lets you know some of the abbreviations that will be used, and by reading through these, you can get also some uh, more instructions if you happen to not know what an SSK is or what a, um, with the uh, yarn in front as if to knit and yarn in back as if to purl, so on and so forth, okay? So this is a nice reference point on the front page. I'm going to move this and we're going to take a look at the second page here. Underneath the sizes, once you've decided what size you will make, you'll notice that there's a section here that says gauge and it gives us a gauge of 15 stitches and 20 rows equals four inches in stockinette stitch with larger needles. 
Now there's nothing in here letting us know if this gauge is in the round or not, okay? But we do know that this entire sweater is knit in the round. So that would lead us to believe that this stockinette stitch gauge is a in the round stockinette stitch gauge. So when you do your gauge swatch, it's important you do one in the round or simulate in the round. I wanna show you how to do that really quickly. So that way you can check and make sure that the size needles recommended for the pattern are the size you need for your gauge. The first thing we wanna pay attention to is the number of stitches that the pattern says are needed to get four inches. And that was 15 stitches. So we want to cast on more than 15 stitches onto a double pointed needle or a circular needle. Either one will work. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So once those are knitted, that should be four inches. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. The reason I want more than just the 15 stitches is when we simulate our stitches here in the round, we don't wanna have to measure these outside stitches. We wanna measure right in the center of our fabric. And that's a good rule of thumb for any project that you are knitting a gauge swatch for. Always knit more stitches than what you need to measure when you're doing your gauge swatch, okay? When you have all of your stitches cast on, you want to scooch them over to the opposite end of the needle. So my yarn that I finished is down here at this end, and I wanna bring my stitches closer to the tip of my needle over here on this end. I will now grab my other double point or the other end of my circular, and I'm going to knit into this stitch, but I will bring the yarn over from that stitch. And when I bring it over, I don't want it to be tight like that. Okay, I don't want it to be tight like that. I wanna have some slack. I wanna make sure I have some slack in my, my work here, okay? So once I get myself some slack, I can yarn over. It's a little tricky here at this first one. Yarn over, come through, and knit. Now, as I carry on, I wanna make sure I leave that slack there. I'm not going to knit with it. I just continue knitting with the actual yarn. And what we're doing here is we will just be knitting every single row, and when we get to the end, like a typewriter, we will scooch our stitches all the way in to the other end of the needle and begin knitting with this, the yarn from the opposite end without turning our work. This will make it so that the right side of our swatch here is always facing us, and we are getting stockinette stitch without doing any pearls because we are not turning our work. When you work in the round, you are working with knits constantly and knits naturally tend to be a little bit tighter than pearls. So when you do a stockinette stitch, it's important, a stockinette stitch gauge in the round, it's important that you simulate getting the stockinette using all knits and not having to purl. So I'm at the end here, again, like a typewriter, I'm gonna scooch everything over to that end. I'll bring my yarn across, and I will start knitting over here again. And I wanna make sure I use, not the, not the float, I don't wanna use my float. Just try and move that out of the way, because I always tend to grab it and I just use my working yarn. Again, I'm just knitting down the row. Now, our gauge says that we have 15 stitches and 20 rows, and that should give us four inches. So, just like we cast on more than 15 stitches, we wanna make sure we work more than 20 rows because we want to measure in the center of our fabric, not just 20 rows and 15 stitches. We wanna get in the center of the fabric, okay? So I'm at the end, scooch my stitches down, and float this across. Come knit over here. 
I'm going to stop here on my gauge swatch just to save time here in the video. But when your gauge swatch is complete, you could go ahead and bind off your stitches or you can take your needle out of the stitches so that way they are relaxed. Now you can see on the back end, everything is just loosey goosey back there. I don't want to tighten it up. I don't want to do anything. I just want to lay my fabric down. Now it's time that we grab our knit check or measuring tape and measure those stitches. So I will place my measuring check right here in this little section here and let's measure. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten rows for two inches, which is exactly what I need. Let's check our row or our stitch gauge. I have one, two, we'll see. Let's start here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven and a half, which gives me the 15 stitches, right? 15 stitches for four inches, making it perfect. So my gauge swatch is right on check. So I don't have to make any changes. If your rows or stitches are too many or too few, you need to change your needle size to make sure you're getting the correct gauge measurement, okay? So it's all right if you have to change needle sizes, it's more important that you get the correct stitch gauge and row gauge. All right, so now you know how to do the row gauge in the round, we can move on to the next step of the pattern and that is the cowl. When looking down here at the pattern, you can see I've made myself several notes so that way I don't forget anything as we go along. But one thing I do want to point out is that the instructions are written with the smallest size outside the parentheses and the larger sizes inside the parentheses. Great thing about yarn inspirations patterns are they is that they are color coded. So you could just find what color applies to you and follow along with that color. I also want to mention that this this says that it is a pullover and we start at the neck edge and we go all the way down to the end. It also talks about that after the cowl we will do some short rows and then it talks about how to do the stranding portion for the fair isle. We'll come back to this part. We're going to jump right here to the body because this is where we will get started in this video. So we're going to start here with the cowl neck. Now the cowl neck on this pattern here is the sweater right here. It's this portion right here. So it's above the shoulders. It's the part that drapes around the neck, very similar to my cowl that I am wearing, right? So we will start right up here and work this entire section in this video, okay? So this is the part we're working in this section of the video. The instructions tell us we are supposed to use our main color and a set of our four smaller needles. What she's talking about there is she's talking about your smaller size double pointed needles, okay? And she did mention a set of four. I have a set of five. I can always just not use one and just have four, okay? Now, having said that, if you happen to have a uh, circular needle that is 16 inches, just like this one, in the smaller needle size, you could also use that. I know that I had enough stitches to work around a circular needle, so I did this portion of my cowl using a circular, but because the instructions are written for double points, I do wanna show you how that would work out, okay? So we will grab our main color, and I'm not gonna cast on the full number, we're just going to do a smaller number here for video instructions. But I love to use the long tail cast on, so I will go ahead and use that. And I will start with a slip knot. Place the slip knot directly onto my needle. And we want to try and have these stitches as evenly spaced as possible around three needles. So let's just say that one needle has five stitches. I can grab another needle, put it right up next to it and cast on to that new needle. You see how I did that? I'm still doing the long tail cast on, but it's just an extension onto the second needle. Let's just put five stitches on there. And then you'll grab your third needle and see how I'm just doing it right there next to that one. 
and we'll put all of the stitches onto there. Now I call this the no cuss cast on. I usually do this with um, four needles, but we can do it with three also. Once you have those stitches on your needles, you will set your needles down and make sure they are like this as they're facing you, okay? So they're like this. Hold the bottom most one, and the bottom one has the yarn attached to it. Grab the other two, and you wanna swivel them around so that way they are on top of this bottom one. Now I'll grab the one to the right so it doesn't go anywhere, and I'm gonna grab the one to the left of it and swivel it around. And I can keep it coming until it meets back up to the very first needle. You see that? See I have a triangle? See how all of my stitches are on the inside of my work? Nothing is crossed over my needles there, so I don't have to worry about anything. Now, we need to begin working in the round on these needles, and the pattern wants us to do a knit to purl to. So here I am, the yarn is still coming off of this needle. I will push this needle down so I can get those stitches ready to work on here. Notice I haven't picked up my work yet. I'm doing this as if you've never used double points before, so that way you can see how this works up. And I'm not picking up my work yet. I'm gonna take my fourth needle here. I will place it into that first stitch. I will take my yarn, now make sure you don't accidentally grab your tail. Take your yarn from this needle over here and wrap it around the needle you just put in. You will now pull that out of that needle, just like you're knitting, and off, okay? It's at this point I can start to pick up my work. I'm gonna just let those other needles hang out. I'm not gonna worry about them. I knit two, bring my yarn between my needles, and I will purl two. Bring my yarn between my needles, and I will knit two. Now I only have one stitch here, not a problem. I knit one. I have a spare needle now, so this will now become my spare needle. If I set these back down, you can see I'm still in a triangle. I'm gonna rotate them. I don't typically set them down, by the way. I'm just trying to do that to show you in the video. So when I rotate, now I'm in a position just like I started with, only now I'm going to knit off of this needle with the yarn coming from that needle with this needle. I know it sounds confusing, right? But it's not. So here I am, I'm just like I was at the start, put my needle into that stitch. Yarn over, this would be my second knit of my knit two. Come out and off, right? Between my needles, and I would purl two. Purl one, purl two. Yarn between my needles, and I would knit two. Knit one, knit two. I'm done with that needle, right? So now I have my spare one. I rotate. And I start here again. Now I like to have my needles on top of the other. So the one I'm working on, I, have, I usually have it on top. I'll pull that down. And I'm going to purl this one to start, okay? So I wanna make sure I'm not knitting. I want to bring this yarn forward go into it like I'm going to purl, and actually purl it. Go into the next stitch, do the same thing. Yarn between the needles, I would knit two. And of course I have an odd number of stitches, so I can't do like a purl two here, right? 
so I'm missing a stitch, but you get the idea. Another thing I want to point out is I'm using larger needles here because I liked how the white showed in contrast to the yarn so that way you could see in the video. But in the pattern, you should be using your smaller size needle. So your size nine double points or your size nine 16 inch if you have them. You will cast on your stitches and work knit two, purl two ribbing all the way around for three rounds. On the final round, you will do a knit two, purl two ribbing, and you will do four increases all the way around. Now, when you do those increases, I want you to do make ones. And the designer does not tell us exactly where to do those increases. So I'm gonna tell you, don't put them all in one place. Like just space them around on that, on that round. It really doesn't matter where you put them. Just make sure they're not like side by side by side. Let me show you how to do a make one. I'm gonna bring in my piece that I'm working on here. And I'm gonna just show you how to do a make one on here. I'm gonna take my left hand needle and I'm going to scoop up that string. Can you see how I scooped it up? You see how it's resting on my needle and the, the front leg is really kind of stepping forward. It's like it's resting on my needle like this, but the front leg is forward. I want to knit that stitch through the back leg because that will actually twist it. So I go into the stitch through the back leg and I knit it and come off. So now I have a stitch there that's twisted and I have my increase. So you wanna do that four times on that final round of knit two, purl two ribbing. After you've done that, so that, that makes it so you've done four rounds of knit two, purl two ribbing, and on the final round is the one that you did the four increases. Then we wanna to switch to a larger needle. When we switch to the larger needle, we will also go and begin to work the first round of our fair owl chart. Really easy, don't freak out, it's okay. Go ahead, get those stitches cast on, do your knit two, purl two ribbing for three rounds. On the fourth round, do your knit two, purl two ribbing and work four increases at some point around that round, okay? You will have a new number of stitches on your needle. The number is written in your pattern. Once you do that, come back here. We're gonna talk about how to switch to a larger needle and begin to read the chart and talk about Fair Isle stranded color work. How you feeling so far? It's not so bad here at the start, right? We just did a simple ribbing. We don't have to stress too much about it. Did you check and make sure you have the correct number of stitches on your needles? If you didn't, make sure you do that now because we wanna make sure that we are eliminating any sort of a hiccup that is just accidental. Taking a look down here, we can see that we have completed this part of the instructions and we're getting ready to go right here. And you'll notice I put a big square around change to set of larger needles. Again, that's because I always forget. I always forget. I start off with the small and then I get a couple rounds into the, the section where I should have changed and I forgot to change. So we will change to a larger needle here. You'll notice that it says set of larger needles. So if you are using double points, you will be switching to a larger set of double points. If you're using circulars, you will switch to a larger set of circulars, both of which are done the same way. And we're gonna talk about that here in just a second. Once we switch to the larger set of needles, we are going to work chart one to the end of the chart. Noting that it's a four stitch repeat and we will be working that repeat for a total of either 20 times or 21 times, depending on the size you're making, okay? So the charts are on page three. This is what we need to know for the rest of the video. This is what we are going to complete for this week's knit along, if you're following along with the knit along, okay? So let's get to page three, and I'm on page three here, and I have used post-it notes to cover up the other charts, so that way we aren't looking at them, okay? I often do that for myself, so I don't get confused of what I'm supposed to be following along with. So I have the other charts blocked off. We're looking at chart number one. We're gonna start right down here at row number one, okay? Now, the one thing to note when you're working charts in the round is we will read each row from the right side to the left. Every single row, we read it from the right to the left. We also will repeat these four stitches all the way around. 
So rather than having for my size 84 stitches all the way across a row, there is just a four stitch repeat. So I will just keep repeating those four stitches all the way around. Does that make sense? And round one is all dark colors. And I can see over here that the dark color means it's a main color. Okay, so I have one stitch in my dark color, one stitch in my dark color, one stitch in my dark color, one stitch in my dark color. So four stitches. That just means that this entire round is just my main color, right? Pretty convenient since I need to also change to my larger needles on this round. So I don't have to introduce another color for this first round and I can change to a, a larger set of needles. So let's see how we do that first. Okay, whether you are working on circulars or if you were working on double points, this is what I would want you to do. You want to go ahead and grab your larger needle. So let's pretend this is my larger needle. And I'm gonna ignore any other needles I have and I will begin to knit this entire round onto my larger needle. So I would just sit here and knit onto my larger needle. And when I get to the end, all of my stitches will be on the larger needle, whether it's my circular, or let's say I was doing this on double points, you know, it'd be like that was the end of one double point, I'd grab my next double point, and I would continue on just knitting onto my double points. And at the end, I'd have everything on my larger needle, and I would have completed my round one of the chart. Does that make sense? So don't waste time slipping stitches onto a larger needle or a larger double pointed needle. Go ahead and knit the entire round onto that larger needle. It makes it a lot easier and you won't drop any stitches. Okay, once that is done, we are ready to actually jump into some fair aisle work. And I wanna to talk to you a little bit about how to hold your yarn when you're doing fair aisle, how to read the chart, and how to make sure those stitches show up and you don't get puckering in your fabric. Okay, everything is on a larger needle. We've completed row one. It's time to jump to row two of our chart. And looking at the chart here, I can see that on row two, I have three stitches of my main color and one stitch of my contrasting color. So I'll go three and one, three and one, three and one, all the way around. Another thing I like to do here is I usually will take a, a post-it note and I will mark off the chart at the point of which I am looking. So I never mark it from below because I wanna see what color stitch I'm working into in case I ever get confused. I always mark it so I block the top off and then as I go along, I'll move my post-it note up, okay? So I've already completed number one, I'm on number two, so I've put my post-it note right above number two. I'm gonna go three and one, three and one, three and one, all the way around. Because I know some of you will be wondering, am I going to work on double points or on circulars? I am working on circular needles and I found that with the gauge given and the number of stitches I have on my needle, I could actually use a 24 inch circular needle for this round instead of double points. If you have 24 inch circulars or 16 inch circulars, you wanna give those a try, you can absolutely do that. If you only have double points, that's okay too. Use the double points and work around with those. That's how we work in the round. All right, let's jump in here. So I want to begin my fair owl pattern. I will knit three. So one, two, three. And in this fourth one, I'm going to introduce my contrasting color. And I will knit one. It's at this point we need to talk about how you will hold your yarn for this project. I like to hold my yarn with each color in a different hand. So I will put my main color in my left hand and my contrasting color in my right hand. What that does is as I knit along, it makes it so that the colors are easily transitioned between one and the next without me having to drop a yarn or twist the strands or do any sort of extra work. 
We do not want to twist these yarn colors together as we're working around. We want to do true fair aisle, which is where we strand them across. You will notice that as I keep one color in my left hand and then strand the color across with my right hand, the result here is one, I get a float that is not so tight that it's going to make our stitches pucker, right? We wanna make sure these stitches are spaced out enough that um, they aren't going to be squeezed together. But then see how this lighter blue is resting, the float is resting above the darker blue float. There's the darker blue float. And here's the lighter blue float, it's on top. I wanna make sure that as I work through my entire sweater, I'm consistent with that. If you always have your lighter blue on top of your darker blue, make sure you do that throughout the entire sweater. If it's the opposite, make sure you do that throughout the entire sweater. So you just decide which one it's gonna be and then just keep it consistent. If you are not able to hold the yarn in each hand like I do, you can work it so that way you drop the colors each time. So I'm gonna drop my light blue here and I will pick up my darker blue. Let's work our one, two, and three. And then in the next one, I make sure my stitches are spaced out. I could drop my, drop the darker blue, take the lighter, strand it across, see it's still on top, and knit, and then drop my lighter and pick up the dark. Don't twist these two, okay? We don't want them twisted. You can do this. It takes a little bit more time, and um, it might be a little bit uh, tedious, but it can be done. Okay, again, make sure you're always spacing out your stitches. Drop the dark, pick up the light, and then drop the light, pick up the dark. Do not twist them together, okay? This is really important because there is so much Fair Isle color work throughout this piece, it's important that you keep this consistent, okay? And as far as these floats here, okay, you'll notice my floats are very consistently spaced and that's very, very, very important. If you find that as you're knitting, you tend to, let's see, let's simulate one. I'm going to knit three. So knit one, two, three. I'm going to drop my dark blue, pick up the light blue, and knit one. Say you're, you're this type of knitter where you knit one and then you really yank on it to tighten it up. See how that pulled all of that yarn from over here so that it came over here. It pulled my float really tight. Can you see how that float is really tight? And now my blue stitches between these two lighter blues are too close together and they aren't gonna space out. That's gonna create a fabric that really puckers and we don't want that. So as you're working through the entire sweater and it starts here at the beginning, you wanna make sure that one, you aren't pulling up on your yarn like that to tighten up, don't do that. You want to have these floats the same distance across those three stitches as those three, three stitches or however many stitches it will be are going to rest on the fabric, okay? That's very, very important. If you are comfortable with the yarn in both hands, you will see that it becomes very easy to knit the stitches in one color, and then when it's time to knit the next one, make sure those are spaced out, and knit the next one. It becomes a little bit faster because you're not dropping the yarn. Having said that, you need to do what you're comfortable with. This is a big project, and as long as you are consistent with whatever method you tend to use, you keep your floats nice and spaced out, and you maintain your color dominance. So I'm gonna say we wanna make sure that this lighter color is on top, okay? You see that? See how it's on top of the, the darker color? The darker color is down there. As long as you maintain a consistent color dominance all the way around, your piece will look 
infinitely better than somebody who hasn't watched these videos, okay? So you wanna make sure we're doing that all the way around. If you're working on double points, as you transition from one needle to the next, if it's at a color change, you wanna be very careful about pulling your stitches really tight between the two needles, okay? Because you could very easily accidentally get a pucker and, and, and not mean to have that. So you wanna be very consistent and careful as you transition from one needle to the next and you're yarning over to create that stitch, don't pull that stitch to tighten, tighten up the needles, okay? I actually really prefer doing these on circulars versus double points. And I'm a big double point fan, but I find working fair out on circulars so much easier than working on double points. All right, okay, so we got that. And four, when we get done with this round, we should see a really consistent pattern because it was knit three with our main color, knit one with our contrasting color. When you get to the end of the round, you're either done with your needle or you've reached your stitch marker. Go ahead and slip that marker and you can take a second and look at your work. See if you happen to notice anything off here at the start. I can see everything looks really great right here and it's a pretty good pattern. We are off to the races. We have completed our first round of Fair Isle. We only have like 150 more rounds to go. <laughs> so let's take a look at the next round as it is depicted on the chart. So I'm gonna bring my chart in. I did fold my paper over. So I will take this post-it note and I move it up. Okay, so now I'm only looking at rows one, two, and three. And here's why I like to make sure I see the rows below, is as I'm working row three, I'm working contrasting color, main color, contrasting color, main color. And I can see that it will be um, contrasting main, contrasting main. And on one of these main colors, I will be working into the contrasting color below. Can you see that? So if I ever get lost mid round and I'm like, wait a minute, I'm never working into that stitch below like I'm supposed to, like it's the wrong color, I can see that I'm off somewhere. Does that make sense? It's just a way to kind of double check your work as you're going around, okay? So we are going to do round three, and so we're gonna do contrasting main, contrasting main, all the way around. So let's move this. I will grab my work here. I will maintain my hold, okay? So I wanna make sure I have my contrasting in my right, my uh, main color in my left, or if you are holding them both in one hand or whatever it is, keep your consistency here. So my first one is contrast, and then main. Contrast, main. Right there, because that was my very first stitch, you see it loosened up a little bit, that's all right, I could just pull the tail and it tightens it up. Contrast, main. Now we'll just do this all the way around. I always like rounds like this where it's one for one because it makes it so easy just to remember one stitch with that color, one stitch with the next. All right, so we slip our marker where we are ready for round three. So I'm going to bring my chart in here. We take our post-it note and move it up. On this one, we can see we have main color, contrasting color, main color, main color. Main color, contrasting color, main color, main color. Main color, contrasting color, main color, main color. We can also see that on the rows below, our contrasting color is on top of a main color. So if we accidentally put a contrasting color on top of one of the other contrasting colors, we know that we've done something wrong. So it's a way for us to double check our work, right? Can you see how that goes? Let's do a couple stitches into this round together. So make sure 
Once again, my yarn is in the same place. So here at the start, we have main color, contrasting, main color, main color, main color, and this one's contrasting, but again, I wanna make sure I have those stitches paced out. So I have contrasting, main color, main color. Repeat it, so I have main color, contrasting. Again, I wanna make sure my stitches are spaced. Main color, main color. You see how that's working up? It's really just this easy, you guys. As long as you are following along with the chart and it's like a paint by number, only you're using yarn, you will be just fine. Okay, see how those stitches are coming up all nice and neat there? What do you think so far? Not that difficult, right? Once you get past that cast on and get those ribbing stitches done and then that increase of four stitches, I find that you're, you're ready to really jump into that next step. And then we're simply just doing the paint by number. The chart simply tells us what color goes into what stitch. And if you follow my trick of using that post-it note and reading the stitches below the row you're working, that will really help you keep track of where you are. It is not that difficult of a pattern, and I don't care if you have to drop your yarn each time to change colors, or if you're able to hold one color in each hand like I do, or if you are one of those really clever people that can hold both colors in the same hand, I want you to do that. Just keep it consistent. Make sure you always have either the lighter color on top or the darker color on top, whichever you prefer, just make that consistent. You also want to make sure that your floats behind the back of the fabric are not too tight. We do not want that fabric to pucker. If you do those two things, you are miles ahead of the rest of the world. I'm telling you, those will make your project so much better just keeping those two little things consistent. What I want you to do for the knit along is work through this entire chart. When this entire chart one is complete, you will be ready for week two of the knit along. I know you can do it. If you have questions, don't hesitate to ask in the Marley Bird knit along group. I've put a link in the video description box right down there below. Make sure you tag me personally if you have a question. I do my best to always get on there and answer your questions as quickly as possible. Good luck everybody. Thanks so much for joining me on the Marley Bird YouTube channel. If you liked what you saw, don't forget to hit subscribe. I've put a link right over there, or you can watch a couple of the videos I've already selected for you right down there. If you want to follow me on social media, I've put my links right over there. You can have all Marley all the time. Bye guys.